Can you still remember the moment that you can travel anywhere you want to cherish good memories with your friends or family? For some people, this has been a while. The COVID-19 is now back on the rise again, putting many of us in isolation and researchers are in the race against time to find a way to fight against this deadly virus. But developing a drug or a vaccine would be impossible if we don't understand well the protein component of the virus, such as the one on the surface here, because this could be the key to explaining how the virus infects us and help researchers find a cure. To get the crystal clear detail about the protein structure, there's a traditional method called X-ray crystallography, which requires you to use advanced technique in biochemistry to turn this tiny protein into a crystal. Then you shoot an X-ray beam onto it. As the beam hits the crystal, it scatters out, creating a fascinating pattern on the detector plate. This pattern is then analyzed by a computer and converted into a three-dimensional model of the protein. Impressive, isn't it? But that's a big problem. This technique requires lots of time and effort, and most of the time, scientists fail to get the crystal. Importantly, knowing just one structure is not enough because the virus is mutating rapidly. Thousands of COVID variants have been identified worldwide, and we don't have time to study all of them. But can we predict how they look? using computers? Here's how it works. Think of a protein as a building block of amino acids. Normally, when it mutates, a certain spot gets changed, but the rest stays pretty much the same. So, rather than shooting an X-ray beam onto every mutated crystal structure that we have, couldn't we just use the model that we already have as a template and computationally simulate a new mutation onto it? This could give you a predicted structure in an instance. In my PhD study, I used this concept to create a web application to help researchers predict and analyze mutated structures. So far, this application has helped thousands of researchers investigate proteins in many species, from human to animals, plants, or even the coronavirus. This might be just a small step, but it could be the first step to more groundbreaking research to come to help stop the spread of the disease that has killed over 5 million people worldwide. And I've seen so many people losing their friends, lovers, or their entire family to the pandemic. And that is absolutely heartbreaking for me. If you are the one whose life has been affected by the COVID-19 as well, please let us sure that you are not alone. Please rem remember this word. With the current technology and all the effort from people around the world, we will fight together. And one day, we all together will put an end to this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Ice, amazing. My question is around this, the predicting that you're doing around the, the mutations. So how many different mutations have you been able to model in this predictive way already, just around, say, the coronavirus? Well, in my research, I did the calculation. I tried to find out how many mutations first. And do you know what? I detect about 7 thousand mutations just only on the spike protein of the virus alone and this is the topic that I'm investigating in you know in, in terms of the virus they have lots of proteins but this is the protein of our interest and we were able to also model about like hundreds of mutations because we were trying to focus on the mutations that were detected in my home country in Thailand because you know this is going to help us you know monitor uh, the, the virus mutation and try to uh, let us find out whether the mutation is harmful or whether it's okay. Thank you. Hello, uh, Ice. Um, I found really amazing your props and I was wondering how this, this part that you, you have this crystal and then the laser. Could you explain a bit more how it works and how did you come with this idea? Absolutely. Well, you know, it comes with the technique which is called the X-ray crystallography. This is not the X-ray, this is not the protein crystal, to be honest, it's just like a regular crystal that I got it from an, an online store. But, you know, in reality, you have to grow a protein into a solution. You have to make it very saturated and you have to make it crystallized. I think it could be like similar way that you crystallize like sugars or salts, but I'm not the expert in, you know, the crystal, X-ray crystallography. I have a friend who is also an expert in this field, and he said it's super, super difficult to get the structure because, you know, you have to get the 
cross the, the, uh, you have to get the structure in a very good shape and it could take months and it's also very expensive to do it and once you get the structure you can shoot an x-ray beam and then you turn the structure around you get the this kind of diffraction pattern and that pattern you know you have to decode that with a sophisticated computer algorithm in order to get the final protein crystal structure this is one of the most you know difficult way uh, to get uh, the predicted uh, to get a crystal structure but it's also one of the most accurate way to get to visualize the protein as well so this is very advanced technique but it's been used for a few decades so far Ice, may I ask, uh, it, within your presentation, you had some lovely light and shade and some emotion. Um, how important do you think it is that science provides hope at a time like this? Well, I think science is very important to providing hope because if we don't know the science, we will don't know, we won't understand how to save our life, how to deal with this situation. And, you know, if we don't know the science, we won't really know that the coronavirus could not be deal, you know, you won't know that you can use uh, the alcohol, right, to, to save ourselves from infectious. You don't know that you have to wear a mask. You won't know that you have to get a vaccine. You won't know even how the vaccine can be created. So the basic understanding and good understanding in science is going to help us survive. And, you know, everyone can be the heroes in saving uh, this situation by following the, uh, the guideline of the WHO or the scientists or the doctors.